Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of MagicReview.com. Before I tell you what we're reviewing today, um, although you're watching this video in the future, uh, today happens to be July 4th, and I just ate seven too many hot dogs right now, so I'm a little bloated, feeling a little bit of the heat. I was the one who cooked them. Got a little red spot on my head right there. So anyway, I'm going to try to get through. I got six videos to record right now, so hopefully I can make it through all the way. Anyway, here we go. First one, Zero Matrix. Um, this is one I've got some mixed feelings about. Uh, I actually saw a review of this that said, stay away, totally stay away. And um, I, I get why they said that, but I'm not entirely sure I share the same opinion. It's two and a half star stone status of Grubble, I believe is what I gave. Um, yeah, Grubble. So, by the way, if you're, if you're new to the channel, <clears throat> um, gem is the best uh, end of the spectrum and rubble is the worst you know it's either a gem or a pile of rubble grubble somewhere in between let me show you what you get first um, you get these which are kind of cool they're these translucent uh, cards they're very thick and very well made you get four plain blank ones like this uh, there's two of them I know I've got some more somewhere around here anyway Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you don't get four. I thought you did. Uh, anyway, you get also these two, which is, uh, this is a Kennedy head, and then this is a Kennedy tail. 50 cent piece. You get two jokers, which again are very, they're very well made. I like them. <clears throat> then you get four aces. And... Uh, Again, they're, they're pretty good. I've actually bought transparent playing cards before, and they weren't as good as these. These are pretty good. They're pretty thick. Um, so there's that. And I know I must have just misplayed. There they are. See, I knew it. So there are a total of four of these plain blank ones. So then one other thing you get are these coins here. These are They're actually plastic. They look pretty metal, but look at Kennedy. It's clearly a fake. It's not a real coin. I, that, to me, isn't a problem. I mean... It's not like people are going to be looking at these, and I can't even show you the other side of these coins. They're gimmicked. Um, so these coins cannot be examined anyway. Um, but they, you know, using them for a matrix I think is fine. Uh, where the problem comes in is some of the claims from the ad copy. Uh, if you watch the trailer, you'll see stuff where, uh, you know, there's a coin underneath the plastic card, and then it vanishes. That relies on an, a stage illusion principle that you'll... You're, you're familiar with it. Um, let's just say that the color of my shirt is not a coincidence, uh, if you know what I'm saying. Um, if you have no clue what that meant, then fine, I've protected the method. I'm not trying to reveal the method here, but this is a principle that only works on stage, really. Now, it worked on the video because they had perfect lighting and everything, and if you were doing a TV spot and you had control of camera angles and lighting and there was no actual audience at the table, you can do some pretty miraculous stuff with this. Uh, if you're a stage magician, and uh, you know David Copperfield did uh, like a McDonald's Aces type of a routine on stage. He just did it on a table, and he had a big camera on it, and he had it on the big screen. You could do this in that environment, and I think it would be just fine. Um, and the method would not be revealed. So that's one of the things that you can do with these four blank cards here <clears throat> is uh, a matrix routine, but... If you are doing this for real people in a close-up setting, you cannot do this. It will not work. The gimmick will be right in their face. It will not work. Now, the Jokers, however, due to the printing on the Jokers, they actually... Sorry, I'm trying to get a good shot. There we go. That's kind of okay. The light's reflecting funny. Due to the printing on the Jokers, you actually can do some of the Matrix moves if you're using these Jokers. Um, and, and the gimmick will be hidden because of the nature of these particular playing cards. So that's one thing you can do with it. Um, the other thing you can do if you are, if, I mean, I don't think this, if you saw the trailer, you know what happened. Uh, you have this and then you pluck a coin out of it. You know, if you can do a snap change, then that's a cool effect you can do with this or this. 
Uh, also, there's a really cool effect on the DVD uh, that is, if you can, the similar technique to a snap change, basically. You turn four regular aces into four blank aces, and you're clean at the end. It's pretty, um, and it's, it's totally legitimate, totally doable. So whether I like the effect or not, I, I did happen to like it. The method is what I care about, and the method is very doable. Um, you have to be seated if you want to end clean. Um, but uh, if you're gonna, if you want to do the matrix stuff with the completely see-through cards like this, or they're translucent uh, cards, you cannot do those close up. You have to do that where you have control over lighting and all kinds of other things. Uh, the other problem with the DVD is it's it's dull. It's all Chinese, and there's no choice for you know translating it to English or whatever um, about I don't know maybe a trick or two into it uh, I realized oh maybe the closed captioning would work so I turned on the closed captioning and it did have English closed captioning of course the problem is when you got closed captioning you're either looking at the text or you're looking at the eye you can't do both and something as technical as a, as a magic video where you're trying to learn the moves and so forth it's hard to do that so there's a lot of pausing and stopping and looking and this kind of stuff uh, I did find, however, when it was just in Chinese, and I'm not trying to read subtitles, uh, relatively, I could relatively well follow along with what was going on. The problem is there are some little nuances and things that it would have been good to have some depth on those, and you don't really get a lot of depth in this training. So, it's 65 bucks for the whole set. You, know, you also get a vinyl wallet, which it, it's not for the trick, it's just probably to keep some of the, they had the cards in it, the plastic cards. Um, in that wallet is something I cannot show you, but what it is, is basically something that you could use to gimmick regular half dollars. So if you had, and if you didn't want to use these, uh, you could make your own gimmicks with this, uh, those, the things that's in this little wallet here. The DVD does not address those at all. I'm just assuming that's what they're for. I know that it would work for that. And so with a little bit of thought, you can actually convert regular coins into these gimmicks. Uh, but these are lighter. They're plastic, and they look close enough. Uh, and if you're doing this, and the only way you could do this, which is not with people close up and not with people examining the coins, might as well just use these. But again, that's if you're a stage guy. If you're not a stage guy, you, there's just, the only thing you're going to get out of this is some of these, you know, the ace trick I told you and the, and the plucking the coin off of the card. And maybe a modified matrix using just the two jokers, which they do show a version using the two jokers in the video. So it's really hard to say. I mean, another video that's going to be released here in about a week is the floating ball by uh, Luis Tomatos, and it's one of these things where it's a, it's a stage effect. It's only for stage. It, it only works on stage. Um, you can't do it close up. And so, you know, does that mean it's a bad effect? I mean, because you can't do this close up, does that mean it's a bad effect? No. Does it mean it's a bad method? No, not necessarily. Where I sort of have a problem is it's a matrix effect. That's typically a close-up routine, and certainly the video plays it like it's a close-up routine. Um, so I had I, it's hard to make a final call. That's why I went right down the middle with this thing. Um, the, uh, one last thing, uh, the ad copy is fine, but the, the video trailer, there's two tricks in the video trailer they don't show you on the DVD. Now, granted, one of them is pretty simple. It's you show a blank card and you pass your hand over it, and now it changes to um, one, you know, an ace or something or a joker. You probably know how to do that. But there was a pretty cool looking coin production that I I know where he was hiding the coin before he produced it, but I'm not sure the exact mechanics to actually create it. So that wasn't taught on there. So a little bit of misleading ad copy. So. The gimmick works fine. The principle is fine if you have some extremely controlled lighting conditions and you don't have people right there. You have to have, this has to be from a distance. And because it's a coin trick, you know, and it's on a table, distance is kind of hard. And so it's all about lighting and angles and everything. And so if that's what you're looking for, then great. If not, not so great. 2.5 stars, stone stats of grubble. That's it. Random IT song of the moment today. We have. Oh my gosh. I'm going to see if you guys. Are... I'm just going to play this for a minute. Um, I got to write it down so I don't forget later. See if you recognize it though. 
You, you recognize it? Anybody about my age should know this song. This is the um, Joey Scarberry. It was the only song he ever did that I know that I mean that people you know are well aware of. It's the theme song from the from the Greatest American Hero TV show back in the eighties. Man, um, the song is called Believe It or Not. I know you've heard it. If you if you're my age, you had to watch that show when you were a kid. Classic, classic show. I just remember uh, the dude's name was Ralph. Um, he um, he was a superhero that was given a superhero suit that uh, whenever the symbol on the suit was exposed, it gave him superpowers. So he always wore it under his clothes, and as soon as he opened up his shirt, you, you, the powers were exposed. Um, but the problem was he never got a train and how to use a suit. So he didn't know how to use the powers. He didn't know what powers it had. He couldn't fly straight because he never read the manual. Anyway, funny stuff. He had sort of a companion, you know, like a partner who was uh, an FBI agent. And uh, anyway, um, it's just a funny, funny show. You, you got to check it out. I think it was on Netflix for a while. Anyway, that's the Greatest American Hero theme by Joey Scarberry. That's it for this video. I'll see you guys in my next review, which I'll be shooting here in just a moment. Peace and out.